Chris Hawkins. I'm with uh, Cafe X Communications. Uh, we're a small startup based out of uh, the UK, Boston, and headquartered in New York. And uh, we've been working with Cisco, and Cisco resells our products specifically as mobile advisor. And uh, what we provide, we're, um, we actually were started in 2013. Uh, we're about 75 employees, and uh, Cisco is actually one of our investors and is a strategic partner of ours. We've been uh, allowing people to build customer engagement applications, specifically real-time customer engagement applications, um, where they can do voice, video, instant messaging, screen sharing, um, and build these very dynamic customer service-oriented apps. And we do this all based upon WebRTC and interact through to Cisco endpoints through SIP predominantly. And the reason why we're really trying to drive customer engagement is because of the number of smartphones. We know that mobile comes first, and that that is only going to increase as time goes on. What is amazing is the number of customer service calls that are happening from smartphones today is actually 30% of all customer service. And there's a wonderful opportunity for us to address that and make it easier for others to use it. In addition, the predominant way people can get access to customer service is through mobile apps. And obviously, we all know how many apps are out there. But again, this can be the primary interface. And customers, uh, Cisco customers like Amex use our technology to do live voice and video from iPads. And many of these organizations are doing multiple apps for many different purposes, both internal and external. And what we allow you to do is to connect to people, see them, and have a far more personal engagement with a customer service rep. And we also enable video. And video is really important for making a personal engagement and really making that every time that you call customer support and that you're talking to a sales rep that, uh, or you're talking to a financial advisor, that you can engage them directly and, uh, and use video to do so. One of the simplest examples that's out in the industry right now and probably the benchmark that everybody uses is to look at Amazon Mayday. And if you're not familiar with Amazon Mayday, around Christmas time they've released the Amazon HDX. The Amazon HDX is a high-end tablet that you can actually buy from Amazon, but it has a button called the Mayday button on it. And with that, you can actually go and talk to a customer service representative or a tech, a tech advisor and they can walk you through that tablet. They can annotate, they can actually work on the tablet, open different applications, and help you through that. And all that's based upon this technology called WebRTC. And I'll get into what WebRTC is. But in this case, you can actually see the representative on the other side. They can't see you, but you can see them. They will speak to you, so you'll have two-way audio. They can do annotation. It's a small little window that you can actually go and use. And then they have complete screen control. They can see the screen of the tablet at their workstation. The agents dress a little different. If you notice from the picture, you'll see that uh, they have an Amazon background. They actually have to wear an Amazon t-shirt. And um, that's different from a lot of customer service reps who are sitting in call centers today. So there is a little difference once you start to engage people with video. And that often, that often worries people. What is interesting is when we work with customers like Amex is that these reps are actually getting to engage with their customers. They actually like it. And if you're unfamiliar with working in a contact center, it's a hard job. It cycles over about three times each year with all staff. And now, because they get to see customers, a lot of them really like it. And the cream of the crop tend to, t um, tend to go and do video first. So what I wanted to introduce is that based upon these, these industry things that are happening, Cisco has a solution that is called Mobile Advisor. And it allows in-app communications, a function we call Live Assist, and then also mobile self-service apps that can go and connect into the contact center. In-app communications allow voice, video, instant messaging, all to be embedded within an application, be it an iOS-based iPhone, a tablet, an Android device, or it could be a website itself. Let's see. And each one, anytime someone goes to click and actually engage someone for that assistance, it would go and talk to a Cisco backend, where it can talk to these wonderful new endpoints that Cisco has, so the DX60s and 90s. And um, anyway, all right through CUCM. And that's, a, that's our integration, is that we provide that server-based component in order to go and integrate that and convert WebRTC into SIP so that we can, talk, we can ring phones. Um, we can also talk to... Uh, 
um, the finesse desktop and funnel video through that. Live Assist takes it one step further where it gives tools to the developer so that they can do that real-time assistance. They can see the screen of the application on the other side that the user is using. They can do co-browsing, they can do annotation, and they can also push documents as well as applications down, down to that user. So I wanted to talk about WebRTC. WebRTC is a versioning standard that's coming out, but a lot of people are adopting it and using it today. And it's because it's embedded in the Chrome browser as well as Firefox right now. Um, Opera as well, all capable. But that means that today there are 1.2 billion endpoints that can go and engage in a video, voice, or instant messaging conversation using this protocol. WebRTC puts a media stack within the browser itself. And, um, and with that media stack, again, you have voice control, um, you, handle, you handle microphone gain, uh, packet loss concealment, all the wonderful things that we've developed in VoIP are all embedded in that. And then another number of companies have actually gone and ported that to mobility. They've taken those libraries, those open source libraries from Google, and applied them to iOS and Android. And Cafe X is one of those. So when we talk about WebRTC, WebRTC is now not just limited to the browser, but it does expand to iOS, Android devices, as well as other things like OS X, uh, Windows 8, uh, native applications in those. One of the best benefits of WebRTC is that there's no plugin required. You don't have to download anything on the website or, uh, or it's e very easy to embed in the application. It just starts a video session right then and there, right while you're in the context of that app. It's easy to develop. Um, it's all JavaScript. Um, very, anyway, basically 20, 30 lines of code, and you can get a fully enabled client running inside that browser. Uh, other things to note is that WebRTC is being worked on both by the W3C and IETF. Uh, it's not an official standard, but there are a lot of really good examples of where it's being used today out in the industry. Specifically, if you're unfamiliar with Google Chromecast, where it's a little device that you stick in your television, and when you stream that video from your laptop onto your television, that's actually using WebRTC to do so. Amazon Mayday is completely based on WebRTC as well, so when you go and click that Mayday button, you're looking at that customer service rep, they're engaging you, and they're using WebRTC to do that. In addition, another more interesting one is Vonage. Vonage has taken those WebRTC libraries, those native media stack, and they've ported it down to iOS as well as Android, and that's what drives the Vonage mobile app. Um, in one of our keynotes here at Cisco Live, we actually saw Amex get on stage and show a representative talking to someone else. In that case, they're using WebRTC RTC technology from Mobile Advisor in that solution to drive that conversation. So when you're talking to an American Express agent using your iPad, you're using Mobile Advisor to, to make that work. Now WebRTC has a few holes in it. Again, I was talking about how it's a versioning standard. It hasn't quite been finished yet. There are a lot of companies that in this past year we created WebRTC gateways. That allows us to connect these these endpoints, the browsers, and these mobile applications into traditional hardware like uh, a voice over IP phone, soft phones, um, and telepresence systems. There are a number of companies that have built WebRTC hosted offerings that allows you to write these applications, connect very, very easily to the cloud. Um, Google and Video have started to implement uh, a higher, better video codex as part of WebRTC, and they're driving that to push VP9 into that standard and allow us to be able to half, roughly reduce the bandwidth by half. There, the, some of the holes really are is that Internet Explorer, Safari don't support WebRTC today. So you can't invoke this media stack um, through all the browsers that are, that are available right now. Mobile Advisor and other companies are working to build WebRTC-based plugins, simple plugins that use all of these media stacks and media capabilities in order to address those browsers. But we think in 2014, these companies will start to come around. So Internet Explorer, Safari will be adopting WebRTC going forward. There's an interesting messaging bus called Data Channel where you can actually exchange data peer-to-peer, -peer, anything related to the application. And you can start from one, uh, one peer and talk to another, and uh, you can leverage that data channel. Some people are building video games. 
Uh, they're doing file transfers all through this data channel. I'll talk about a little bit about how we extend uh, WebRTC to include what we call application event distribution, where we can uh, create a topic, send data back and forth um, to those that subscribe a topic within a WebRTC application. A little different than data channel. Let's see. Um, in 2014, people are adopting DTLS Media. That's a new encryption standard, a new handshake for secure communications within WebRTC. So WebRTC. We also have a bit of a codec issue for video in particular. There are two mandatory codecs being used for audio. One is G711, the other is Opus. Both great codecs. Obviously, G711 has been around forever. Opus is a far more advanced and forgiving codec when you're dealing with packet loss, jitter, and latency on a network. But for video, um, we have two competing standards. One is VP9, the other is H.264. H.264 is the predominant video standard that's out there today. Again, all the endpoints are using it. But in, in Chrome specifically, that's where it's limited only to VP9, Google, uh, VP8. Google has made that decision. So there needs to be some interoperability, some transcoding that takes place between those codecs. But we're hoping that going beyond 2014 that we'll actually have a mandatory codec. It could be VP9 or H.265 that drive that in, uh, in 2015 or beyond. You know, technically, when you look at it, there are three dominant APIs um, that are being leveraged in WebRTC. Get user media, establishing a peer connection, and the use of data channels. Get user media really goes and allows you to access, have access, conditional access, if the person allows you to, to the camera and microphone on the device that the browser is running. And then when you want to see, send and receive that audio and video, you use peer connection to do so. I already talked about a lot of those different protocols that are being used and codecs that are being used as part of WebRTC. And then this is a standard illustration of the stack that's implemented within the browser that the developers can leverage. Again, what's nice is that there's a, not, there's a wonderful abstraction from this stack to use JavaScript to invoke it, or in our case when it's on iOS, a simple, simple um, Objective-C calls or Java calls into the Android device. So now what I want to do is, talk, now that you understand the technology that is behind it, is to go a little bit into the features of Live Assist. Again, these are, this is a functionality within Mobile Advisor that our developers can leverage. What, is, what does Live Assist do? Again, when I have an application, a mobile application, I can actually do screen sharing, I can do annotation, I can push documents, video, images down to that person, and it really gives the experts some tools to help someone on the other side, on the remote side of that call. All with voice, video, or instant messaging. So I could be in an instant messaging session, the person's having problems, I want to go and talk to them about a specific document, I give them that PDF, we're both looking at it, I can circle things and, and walk them through the terms and conditions, or if it's a mortgage application. I can then escalate that call into voice and video and help them in case that conversation starts to get, um, go downhill. It's really about giving those developers these tools so that the, we can expedite the process, expedite that, that customer service interaction. So we really go beyond Amazon Mayday. Amazon is li Mayday is limited to one specific device, and we open it up to the all web applications as well as iOS and Android. So if you need to go and deliver customer support leveraging WebRTC, you're obviously not going to be able to go and give out tablets to each one of your users and own that operating system. Your primary mechanism to do that is going to be to upload a, um, an application to the Apple App Store or to Google Play. And now you have all this functionality within that. And it can go and connect directly into your contact center infrastructure. So we can, pass the, we can pass all that application data down to that user, and then when the, the agent receives a call after being in queue, they can go and start a live assist session. And we've gotten some accolades as a result of doing this. Uh, we won Best of Enterprise Connect Award for Mobile Advisor with this live assist functionality. But CAFEX is really enabling real-time customer engagement beyond that. So again, now to start talking about within Live Assist, what can you do for voice and video? You have access to standard definition as well as high definition uh, video and audio. 
We support both H.264 as well as BPA. And one of the more interesting things is that um, in the mobile devices themselves, they can switch before, between H.264 and BPA to limit transcoding. And Cafe X is one of the few companies that can do that, or Mobile Advisor as a solution. We offer network quality indications so that you can understand what's going on. Is that network going downhill? Could I adjust from going from video to then actually only use audio in that instance? We also provide transcoding when it's needed, and we our video codecs, we've implemented adaptive rate control so that if we understand that the bandwidth is getting limited, our video will reduce its bit rate so that the video can be maintained. And it looks seamless and it continues to have a great interaction. As a result, we're seeing some of our customers doing all over-the-top communications with Live Assist with 100% call quality. That means every call sounds wonderful. And again, Amex does not own that network. So these people are all doing all these communications from Wi-Fi at home, maybe even 4G, and then connecting into that contact center, bypassing the 800 number, bypassing the traditional ingress mechanisms into that contact center. The other great thing is screen sharing. And when we talk about screen sharing with, app, with Live Assist, we're really talking about the application. Within an iOS application, we can actually go and share the exact representation of what's happening on that screen with the agent. And what you're looking at here is a Finesse console, where within that, we have a widget uh, within Finesse that actually is showing the live picture of what's going on on that iOS device, on the tablet. So if you're in an iPad and you're looking through this application, you're trying to go through, through a specific store, or maybe you're trying to fill out a form and you need help at that point, you click for service support, that agent has complete access to your desktop if you so choose. They can help and circle, they can actually get, get you through that application. What's neat about it, and one of the neat things about the way Live Assist has implemented this technology is that and we don't share DOM back and forth. We're not sharing representations of the web page. We're actually taking an image of what's happening on that iPad and sharing it um, to, the, to the advisor, to the mobile advisor, to the expert on the other side. And that's consistent across Android, iOS, as well as the web page. So it's a wonderful technology in that um, if you have an agent that's using maybe Chrome and another one that's using Internet Explorer, they're not going to get differences in terms of what that agent is looking at on the other side. Let's see. Oh, another thing to note is that it's very easy for the developer to mask or hide information that might be sensitive in their application from the expert on the other side. So be it a social security number, maybe a credit card number, um, a CVV code, all of that could be masked or hidden from the from the developer, from the uh, from the expert, when the application is designed. We also ha allow expert control and annotation. That means the expert can go and click on a certain area of the page. They can change the screen. They can walk that person through the application. So if someone's lost and do doesn't know where th where to go, the expert can go and guide them through that. Or they can go and highlight a certain section, get that, get that person to do it themselves. So again, co-navigation through an application, um, helpful by the agent. Really improving customer satisfaction with every interaction that uses Live Assist. And lastly, um, one of the other great features, that, a little different than Mayday, is that we can actually push documentation. So if the expert has a listing of a knowledge base that is relevant to what they're doing and their task at hand, they can go and push PDFs, images, even video, down to the user on the other side. They can even send links to another web page or maybe to a forum saying, hey, here's how we're going to expedite this and we want to get you, get you there quickly. Let's see. And all of this works, uh, you can annotate over that documentation once it has been pushed, and it also works with instant messaging, voice, as well as video going on in the background. So there's some great things to get started with Live Assist, Mobile Advisor Live Assist. Specifically, um, we have a great DevNet lab, lab over here. It takes about 10 minutes to go and set it up. You can work uh, very, very quickly. Uh, it's all, it's all web-based here, it's not Objective-C because you're not building an application, but with two simple lines of JavaScript you can go and get your website embedded 
with Live Assist. That means you can go and direct a call, direct a, a customer engagement scenario, direct to another web browser. That expert would be able to receive that call and start that session. For iOS and Android, it's a single line of Java or a single line of Objective-C in order to get started, and then you invoke all our libraries. Very easy for a developer to get started. We also have a developer, developer community where you can get access to a complete SDK from us. All runs on the laptop and includes all our server components to connect to traditional endpoints. Um, allows the developer really to engage without worrying about, worrying about the network, and on, uh, network conditions that are going on at, at the moment. Um, we also have online developer. We have an online developer curriculum, uh, very very easy to walk through, and we're going to be working with DevNet hopefully to uh, get these up and running for the broader Cisco developer community. One of the things I talked about was that developer environment, and we have a Fusion Trials environment. Uh, basically, it's an installable that runs right on an OS X laptop or in a Linux on a Linux machine. Um, it includes all of our server components as well as our three primary SDKs, um, the JavaScript SDK, the Objective-C SDK, as well as the Android SDK. And that can all run within uh, Eclipse or Apple Xcode. You know, I think that really covers what Live Assist is, but if you want to go and make a very personal customer engagement to invoke that very, very easily from a developer within your own existing applications that you go to service your customers with. Again, simple line of code, very easy for a developer to get up and running, gives him this wonderful breadth of features. And um, anyway, with that, we've had a lot of success, and we're really looking forward to continuing with our partners at Cisco, as well as uh, all their developers. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? I know we have a microphone here that we can share. Rob, how many, how many, Rob, how many people did the lab? About 40 people have done the lab. So again, that's a, that lab's really easy. It takes about 10 minutes. Um, you basically have build, there's a pre-existing website. You include our code, get it right up and running. I know I did it two days ago, and uh, Rob, Rob Wellborn worked very hard on it. Right. Good. So again, this feature functionality, all these WebRTC components are branded as Mobile Advisor for Cisco. Um, again, very easy to get up, get up and get running. Uh, feel free to contact me or Rob Wellborn, and uh, we'd be happy to uh, show you the features that, that we've been working on, some of the cool stuff that you can do. Great. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.